All right, how's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to the weekend. It is a Saturday. Hope everyone's having a good weekend out there. May 17th, 2025 is the date. 10, 19 a.m. That's California time. Latest activity here on the Earthquake 3D Globe shows, uh, looks like a little 1.6 or little 0.9 Southern California area. Pretty decent swarm of earthquake activity across Northern California last night. I was expecting this to maybe lead to something bigger. We did see a number of threes right after the update last night. Um, a total tally of about eight earthquakes of, uh, as you can see, twos and threes there. And I'm sure some smaller quakes in the mix. Normally they don't add the smaller quakes here on the Earthquake 3D or the uh, map here, the USGS map for whatever reason. Occasionally they will, but looks like they've turned that off there as far as uh, reporting anything below the 2.0 threshold. So keeping an eye there on Northern California, it's been active there across the region far as stress and also active down across the subduction zone into the deeper area here underneath Northern California, Oregon, and Washington. Uh, this was a trimmer map here from yesterday, almost eight, 800 epicenters of trimmer. That's a fairly decent number, and it's been that way here for about 10 days or so. Uh, we'll check that out a little bit later on this evening, see what the trimmer count looks like but uh, still gaining momentum and steam out there across that Cascadia subduction zone uh, the Bay Area uh, aside from a couple smaller quakes here on the looks like that's a Makama fault and the Clear Lake volcanic field uh, the Bay Area specifically pretty quiet uh, some movement this morning on the just right around the San Andreas fault or just off of the creeping section here Got two earthquakes in the last hour. Very small earthquakes, nothing big. Southern California here looks about the same as what it did yesterday. A number of earthquakes out here, but really no uptick. Just general small microquake activity that we see on any given day across Southern California. Uh, into the Intermountain West areas, Montana looks quite active up here, but uh, some ones and twos. Looks like another 2.4 overnight up into the Ovando, I believe that's right, Ovando, Montana area. Well outside Yellowstone National Park. A lot of strain out here recently across the western portion of the country. Even Yellowstone was jumping in on some earthquake activity. That uh, has since died off, it looks like. Um, well, maybe a couple spikes here in the last hour. These earthquakes there are very small microquakes, but it looks like they are still continuing there. Uh, yesterday, seen a little noticeable uptick in earthquake activity there. Let me show you guys the previous day across the Maple Creek area. This is yesterday's events. Quite a few earthquakes. Uh, I'm probably going to say a good 70 or 80 earthquakes there across Yellowstone National Park yesterday alone. And those are, again, very small earthquakes. USGS really not reporting on any of those. In fact, they probably have the threshold up here for reporting uh, at a 2.5 and above. But there's still earthquake activity ongoing there. Uh, this reading right here, Maple Creek, that's a distant signal, uh, signature of a large quake. That's going to be off of that six-pointer that popped down there along the Prucilli Trench this morning right here. Here, the San Pedro, Peru area, 57 miles deep there into that subduction zone. That seismic wave did show up quite nicely there across, uh, well, I'm sure a good uh, majority of the seismograph stations around the area, even thousands of miles away. It just goes to show you how sensitive uh, the equipment is that can pick up uh, ground motion. Uh, Texas oil fields, it looks like... <laughs> It looks like they added back on some of the smaller quakes there. You guys see that? <clears throat> yesterday, I was, uh, during the morning update and the evening update yesterday, I was talking about how they're not reporting the smaller quakes out here. Why do they only show 3.0 and above? Looks like someone got the memo there and uh, readjusted everything because these quakes were not on there. As far as the ones and the, and the twos go, they were not on there from yesterday. And voila. After a little bit of speaking up in my videos, they pop back up. So that is that is good. I, I just thought it was odd that they were only showing 3.0 and above. And this area of Texas, 
They've been, you know, for the longest time, been showing all the ones and twos out there in the oil fields. So looks like we're back to normal. Thank you. Uh, some movement outside of the OKC area to the northwest near Dover, Oklahoma. Uh, quite a few oil fields out here as well. The rest of the country, New Madrid seismic zone looks like one more earthquake, a little 1.8. Nothing big going on there across the uh, eastern portion of the country for now, as far as uh, earthquake activity goes. Severe weather. Goodness, a lot of uh, tornado activity there yesterday and overnight. So let's see what we got down here across the South America area. Looks like things have ramped up across the Prudhoe Trench following some events out here. Uh, had a 4.9 from yesterday and then a 5.0 just after 1 o'clock this morning local time here. This is on the Antarctica and the Nazca plate boundary. This is a, a frac some of it's a fracture zone. Uh, and most of it, though, is a, um, well, down here you get, come across the divergent boundary zones. But when earthquake activity happens along this plate boundary here, it normally adds further strain across the Prudhoe Trench. And I'll show you guys the map here. Uh, here's the Nazca plate. The earthquake activity in question is happening right about here at the tip of the finger there. And the general strain, the pressure motion, tends to put that, due east here along that Prudhoe Trench. And that's where we've seen this 6.0 earthquake this morning. Makes sense there following uh, a couple events out there in the Pacific here recently. Uh, there was one back on the uh, 13th, 5.2. But it looks like most of the movement here from yesterday um, continuing that squeeze along the Prudhoe Trench. I'll watch out there because it's uh, they can get some big earthquakes. But for now, I believe that 6.0 is the largest here in the last 24 hours. Uh, previous to that, a 5.2 around the Burma area, that's Myanmar region, up where that 7-pointer struck a number of, uh, a number of months back now. Alaska area, looks like a recent 4.9 up there. There's definitely some adjustment trying to take place out here across California and the West Coast here last night. That's still, I mean, obviously... It didn't happen, but uh, that swarm of quakes here across Northern California and the tremor activity uh, was leading me to believe that something was about ready to pop out here. And maybe it got really close. we we'll just have to keep an eye on that. Japan area, fairly quiet aside from a 3.5 north. Uh, let's see here. New Zealand, still moving down there. I hear it's close to winter time down there. 3.2 across South Island, 3.1 a little bit further up north. Nothing major going on there for now. We still really haven't filled in across this area, roughly about Solomon Islands eastward through Vanuatu and the Fiji area at the surface levels. This normally should have a little bit of earthquake activity happening on it on any given day or any given every other day, and it's uh, not. It hasn't really filled in here, so we'll watch that maybe for today. I might see some larger movements start to fill in across that region. A lot of activity here across the Philippines southward. Nankai Trough up here is still pretty quiet, but uh, it's lurking. It's it's a very hazardous subduction zone region, right? It's been building up some steam here for a little bit. And uh, some threes and twos, even a 4.1 out there looks like around eastern Afghanistan area. Uh, aside from that, the Atlantic Ocean looks pretty quiet. Uh, but definitely a noticeable uptick here along the Prudhoe Trench. That's, uh, I do like to point out when we see visible results there from earthquakes where the general strain tends to transfer to. Uh, and that's just a prime example. Some increasing uh, movement here due to the activity back offshore along that Nazca and the Antarctica plate boundary. Very close to the triple point boundary, actually. But uh, indeed, a decent earthquake uptick. Mexico area as well. Looks like the northern end of the Middle America Trench. Some threes and fours going on there. Now, there's a couple fours up there in Alaska, it looks like. 4.9. That's along the Aleutian Trench here. There's the other one, 3.9, a little bit closer to Anchorage. Around the Anchorage area, just a couple smaller earthquakes out there for now. All right, space weather activity. Did we uh, get to see any auroras last night? It was somewhat amplified there early in the evening. 
up around the G2 class storm. It has, uh, looks like it's died off here a little bit. Still expecting maybe some unsettled conditions there for auroras over the next couple nights. Uh, as far as flaring goes, looks like they've updated this here to Beta Gamma Delta, which it's still at, but declining. So instead of growing, it took a sharp nosedive and is fading off into the sunset, so to speak. 4087 here has been a source of uh, at least one decent X flare and uh, a couple M flares and multiple C flares as well. Let's see what's going on here. Is it is it me or is this it's the site? I believe. Come on, Solar Ham. What's going on here with you? I'm trying to get the uh, magnetogram latest imagery. All right, we'll let that load, I guess. It shouldn't take that long. But uh, even from last night, it looks like this sunspot was starting to decay, unfortunately. That's, uh, and I say unfortunately because it's, it's uh, the flaring activity out there is actually, um, I should say the resulting CMEs is kind of neat for folks to see. You know, when we get the aurora activity, it's a neat little deal. We're pretty safe from any CMEs and the, um, the effects of these solar flares, but it is neat to see. That's why I like to see the sun kind of sparking up a little bit. All right, it looks like this is just not working. But uh, so flare threat is probably going to drop decently here. It might be actually it looks like it's the NASA.gov website. Solar Ham's working just fine, but he embeds the links here to the actual images from NASA, and that's the NASA site that's not working. So Solar Ham's working just fine. The NASA site offline it looks like. Uh, flare threat is dropping 10%. I'll have to update mine. M flare at 35% chance. And as you can see, we're we're way down here in the B flare category. That's the boring class. So goodness. All right. Storm Prediction Center. I'm going to look at the tornado threats here from yesterday. Quite a bit. Quite a bit of tornado activity. 28 reports of tornadoes. Some of those quite damaging as well going through the uh, Missouri area. Um, man, just a lot of damage out there. Big time wind reports as well. Look at that. 726 reports of wind damage. High wind. 363 reports of hail. That's a, a big time severe weather event from yesterday. As uh, far as today goes, let's see what we're uh, looking at. Most of that is kind of, looks like that low is way up north here. Uh, there's still some convection going on across Texas area, enhanced zone. Got some tornado activity, wind, and a little bit of hail threat out there as well in those regions. So just be uh, weather aware. It is uh, uh, get deeper into springtime here, folks. You know, these storms, these severe weather setups are quite common for this time of year. Just got to be prepared. Number of days of severe weather across southern plains, it looks like. If I wasn't super busy out here, I'd be flying out there to cover that. It's out there in some, some of my... Uh, uh, more favorable chasing areas. Even day four. Day four looks to be a decent severe weather event as well. Um, a little bit further east of today's region, but we'll cover that as we get a little bit closer there to the uh, time period. Uh, let's see. Next five close approach asteroids. Well, this is from NASA. Well, this NASA site's working. All right. Uh, nothing big going on here as far as close approaches. There's a number of big ones, though. Excuse me, goodness. That doesn't happen too often, but when it does, it's a dandy. Um, Four million miles away for a 1,100 foot size, uh, stadium size asteroid. Goodness. Aside from that, folks, everything looks uh, safe for now. All right, let's see here. Just giving a recap of anything major going on there. there's really not a lot the last earthquake up here was that 3.5 from late last night but there was a bunch that kicked up that came to an abrupt halt southern california and san andreas fault here just a couple smaller earthquakes in the last hour nothing big for now but 
just be on guard. Enjoy your weekend, and we will see you guys back out here for the Saturday night update. Take care, folks.